Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church. Today we are continuing our study of eyewitness, how to be an effective witness for the gospel. Eyewitness is part of the large series called I Christian, in which we have made many series to describe the basics of Christian life. And we have made till now, I believe, I confess, I pray, I worship, I fellowship, I give, I baptize, I Eucharist, I study, I obey. And now we are in I witness. And to be a witness is to obey Christ's last address to his disciples. He said in the upper room discourse in John 13 to 17, he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And of course, his last commandment is the Great Commission, which, in which he commanded us to go to the nations and be his witness, to make disciples for him. Therefore, to be a witness for Christ is to tell the truth about Christ. Since Christ claimed himself to be the way, the truth, and the life, and that we will know the truth, and truth will make us free. So, to tell the truth about Christ, we must own the truth first. We must know what we believe and why we believe. So, once we have thought it through on these issues, we will become a natural witness. And we don't have to depend on the programs or booklets or memorized uh, words. Okay? We will just go naturally or rather supernaturally by the, super, uh, the filling of the Holy Spirit, which we will talk later. So today is the last time we will expand on the preparations on know why you believe. The issue is about current issues. Success versus the cross. What is the narrow way to heaven? Today, the church age has entered its last stage. I believe that the seven letters to the seven churches in Revelations 1, uh, chapter 2 to 3, is a picture or portrayal or prophecy of the whole church history. And uh, the first church, the church of Ephesus, portrayed the, the apostolic church, in which they loved the truth, but they forgot the first love. They still loved to distinguish the false apostles from the true apostles. Therefore, that was the time when there were true apostles. However, they had their mistakes and God commanded or encouraged the overcomers to go forward and be faithful and that God will reward them. And we go all the way till the, the seventh church, which is the church of Laodicea. And uh, Laos is the people, Decia is rule, so Decaia is rule. So the Laodicea means the church when the people rule. Okay? So today the church is a democracy where people have ticklings in the ear and they will hire people who will tickle their ear will say the things they love to hear. And um, that's basically the American spirit entering the church. In the Bible, the church is not a bottom-up bottom up structure, it's not a democracy. The Bible has a authority and power from the above. God established the church. God sent Christ, who appointed the apostles, who appointed the elders, and the elders rule the church, and they appoint deacons to serve in the church, and people rise up in ranks by the approval of the above. Well, that structure gradually had its abuse 
and uh, misuse. So in the Middle Ages, the top-down structure went to ex extreme and the church corrupted from within. So from the Reformation, we started to break that top-down structure. And uh, some are middle way, like Presbyterian rule, when the representative of the mature men of the church will rule the church. And uh, some are bottom up, some become democracy. You know, every member have the equal right, have one vote, and we, they vote out the deacons, and deacons will hire the preacher who will, well, be hired and fired by the people. And um, they have to please the people. And that's the spirit of the day. Okay. And uh, with that, the church's teaching gradually conformed to people's sinful nature and uh, their fleshly desires and the worldly trends. Okay. Um, the, the Western civilization in the last let's say four or five hundred years after the Reformation, had progressed with great success in material production. And uh, it gained the great power and it controlled the most of the world. The Western civilization had two strands in it. One is the Judeo-Christian, the spiritual side, the uh, deist or the uh, the divine side, a top-down side. And there's another side, which is the Greco-Roman, the humanist, the bottom-up side. They had a mixture, and after the Reformation, it turned to become quite successful. And uh, people were attracted by it. And modern civilization had three legs. It has the Judeo-Christian uh, belief. It has the uh, uh, the um, the democratic republican uh, political system democratic means the highest power belongs to the people republican means the limited power to the government and that gave people freedom and then you have the free market system in which people use their system to benefit themselves by serving others you produce things people will buy your things and then you get rich and prosperous that system had given success in the material side. However, it also produced greed and it also produced a thirst for power and uh, the desire to satisfy uh, the flesh. And uh, the church had been one of the three legs okay, of the modern civilization as a good counterbalance to the humanist side. However, when the church enters the last stage, Laodicean um, stage, then there are fewer and fewer people who are courageous to teach the whole counsel of God and do not become populist to please the people, to tickle their ears. That's why the most popular churches these days are those who have some kind of um, charismatism and uh, it uh, conforms to the postmodern spirit. Okay? The way of knowing is a good mark for the philosophy of mankind. We had the classical age from circa 500 BC to about 500 AD, and that's called a classical age, when people uh, in the ancient Greece, they believed in reason, they are looking for what to believe. And from circa 8500, um, people in the West knew what to believe. They believed in Christ, and uh, they entered the medieval age for about another thousand years. and. Uh, in that time, they know what to believe, and they, they used reason to systemize everything, and they had the canon law, they had a systematic theology, and everything is in one order. However, the church corrupted, so we had a change uh, from top down, the Platonian uh, thinking to the bottom up, the, uh, the Aristotelian thinking.
and uh, from the greatest thinker went from Augustine, uh, Augustine to Thomas Aquinas, and that's the change. And with that change, we entered the modern age from circa let's say 1500 to about 2000. That about 500 years is modern age when people don't have faith in God. They still believe in reason. They believe that there is a truth. But the truth is in science, not in the Bible. So they try to use experience to prove uh, theories in what to believe. And that's science. Science uses experiments to prove theories to be right or wrong, either way. Okay. And uh, the age of science on the other side uh, has produced many false worldviews. They uh, they tried to make a big picture to replace the Judeo-Christian worldview. Therefore, we had the National Socialism, which is Nazism, in the West, and the International Socialism, which is Communism, in the East. And they have produced greatest catastrophes in the 20th century. They killed more people than all of the mankind have ever killed before. So, well, that's because of the progress of the human population. and. Uh, People became wary of science and uh, ideologies in the name of science. So right now, uh, except the global warming, which is a lie, people are afraid. They rejected these ideologies in the name of science. They went into postmodernism, where they don't believe in the universal truth anymore. They just believe in feeling uh, individual truth peace vice truth, individual experience, subjective experience, not necessarily object experience. Okay, so with that spirit of postmodernism and uh, the charismatic church satisfied that trend uh, in the church because they focus less on truth and more on feeling and experience. In a sense, it is good. This is God's way of using the spirit of the day to reach the people of the day. Charismatic Church has brought more people into the, uh, the family of God in the last, let's say, 50 years than the, all the other types of the churches. Okay? Uh, and, and they are doing it more and more. But on the other hand, because of the um, less emphasis on the truth and the misapplication of a few signs like tongues and uh, healings and uh, um, etc. etc. Uh, they have um, produced a lot of um, misguided, somet sometimes false believers. And the messages of uh, truth, uh, uh, no, of health and wealth gospel is a false gospel. Okay? And that kind of church, on the other hand, is the most popular church of our days. Okay? Success versus the cross. Okay? What is success in the biblical sense? Is getting rich, uh, having great health, good figure, is that the success that the Bible meant? The Bible did say that if you trust in the Lord, you will be successful. Okay? And uh, in Joshua, God said that uh, you may have success where you go if you are strong and courageous by trusting in the Lord. Okay? And uh, the work that Joshua faced, however, was fighting against the giants that lived in the promised land. So it was not an easy job. It was difficult. And the people had no faith in the previous generation. In the second generation after the Exodus, they had faith. And uh, they have never seen the miracles, but they believed without seeing, and that is faith. And God re rewarded them with courage, and they will conquer the giants and occupy the promised land. But that's not easy work, and they will have some costs. Some people may die in the wars, but 
with a very small rate, and mostly they were successful when they trust in the Lord. They have people die in AI because they have lost their faith. So we can see that the Bible did teach us to be successful, but it doesn't mean to face no trouble and deal with no, no difficulties and have no uh, sickness and death. Okay, and uh, success in the biblical sense is to trust in God by faith and overcome our flesh, our having little faith, okay, and making us spiritual rather than fleshly and godly rather than worldly. That is the biblical success. And uh, to have that kind of success sometimes means you have to carry the cross. That means you are ready to die for God. And uh, there are times when you will be persecuted for being a Christian. And the time is coming for the American Christians to face that. The, the Christians in other countries have faced that a lot more. Of course, in third world countries, in communist countries, these days in the Islamic countries, and more and more in Europe, the secularist countries. And America is becoming secularist as well as spiritualist. That means the um, being spiritual but not Christian. So they can be Wiccan, they can be um, New Age, uh, and they may become Islamic just not Christian. So all of these people, the secularists, the spiritualists, the, and the Islamists will unite against the Christians. And uh, you will pay a price for claiming your belief. What will you do at that time? Do you want to keep your success in the world? That means your name and fame, your wealth and health. Or do you want to keep your eternal life? There are times may you, uh, maybe you will face the pressure to deny Christ's name before people of your peers or authorities. There are times maybe you will be tested to live an ungodly life in order to be accepted by your peers, co-workers. And uh, what do you do? Okay. Do you surrender? Or do you keep your faith and leave the result to God? Do you think the God that created heaven and earth in six days, do you think the God who resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead has difficulty in providing you with the means of life? Do you have faith in him? Do you trust in him? Do you believe that he really loves you, loves you so much, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that those who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life? Do you fathom the depth of love by sacrificing your only begotten son? Can you fathom the feeling of Abraham, when he lifted his knife and was about to slit the throat of Isaac, he did that with faith, trusting that God, since he promised that he will give the Savior to the world through Abraham's only seed, he will not let the child die, and he will, even if he let him die, he will resurrect him. That's the faith. Abraham had. And Christ went to the cross with the faith that God the Father will resurrect him from the dead in three days. And uh, if you are tested to deny the name of Christ or to compromise his honor, will you stick to his honor and give up all you have? Because Christ gave up all he had to redeem you. See, that is the real success in God's eyes. That is the way of the cross. Okay? And uh, Jesus said the way to heaven is narrow. In the book of um, Matthew, 
in chapter 7, verse, uh, I think, 13. Uh, that is the section that talks about the narrow way to heaven. Let me read it to you. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who enter it. There are few who find it. So, the way to hell is wide. There are many ways. There are ways through believing in no God or believing in many gods. There are ma they are all false gods. And uh, uh, even within the one God, monotheism, there, is the, there are many false religions also. Rabbinical Judaism and Islam, they all, and the Jehovah's Witness, they all believe that there is one God, but God is not a trinity. And that is against the word of God, and that is the way to perdition. And those are the way to perdition. And even in Christianity, there are three major branches, Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodox. They have, um, um, well, disemphasized salvation by faith alone. It was the Protestants, the Reformed people, who em emphasized salvation is by faith alone, in, uh, in grace alone, through Christ alone, and the Spiritual authority is scripture alone, and uh, um, the purpose of life is to glorify God alone. Those five alones are essential for gaining the entry to heaven. And uh, there are many people who are Christians in their worldview. People in these three branches, they all have Christian worldview that there is one God and God is Trinity. But if you don't believe in these five alone, you are not necessarily saved or born again. In my belief, that is what the Bible teaches. There is only one way and a narrow way to heaven. The narrow way is to believe in Jesus Christ to be your Savior, and it's your personal relationship to Him. And that will give you the membership in the family of God. That you accepted his love, he proposed to you as the husband-to-be, to the church. And you, as part of the church, you said, I do, to his love, by trusting in his work and his work alone, and uh, crediting nothing to your work, your life, because our works are nothing but rags, dirty rags before God. And uh, if you count any contribution to your salvation, you are trying to buy your ticket to heaven. You are making deals with God. You're not accepting a gift. You have turned a gift of infinite value into a cheap purchase. And you will be proud of yourself and not grateful to the giver. You see, that is not the way to heaven. The gate to heaven is narrow and few will find it. And uh, there will be false teachers and uh, they will produce bad fruits in life. In other words, they may be successful in the sense of having many people listening to them. They may have great income because they teach people, if you give your tithes to me and I will bless it and then God will give you ten times back. And those people who give with wrong motive, okay, they may get some effects. I'm not sure it's from God. And uh, those who receive these tithes will become rich and they will become your example of how successful life is. But these are not examples of godliness and uh, they will have to be accountable to God when they face God. And there may be a day when they see not 
San Peter, but Jesus Christ. And uh, they will say, Lord, haven't I done many things for you? Haven't I prophesied? Haven't I done miracles in your name? And Christ will say, I don't know you. Okay, you who are lawless. You see, we are saved by grace alone and uh, through faith alone and in Christ alone. And uh, the way to heaven is through Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And except through him, there's no other way to heaven. And this is the truth. And there's no other truth. There's no other name under heaven that can save. There's only one name, that is Jesus Christ. You can be saved only by trusting in him, believing in him as who he claims to be. He is the son of God. He's the savior of men. He lived a sinless life, but he died for our sins. He came back from the dead. He is now resur resurrected and sits in heaven, and he will come back to judge the world. Stick to him, and then you will be successful. Amen. Dear viewers, Truth For Today has served the community of West Texas for over half a century. Those who cannot go to church at this time can receive a full meal of biblical teaching to satisfy their spiritual needs. You have been great in making this a viewer-supported ministry. The Bible says, Those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. Once you became a partner of our ministry through prayer and giving, we sow the seeds together with Christ our Lord, and we will reap with him together when he comes again. Recently, a regulation from the Federal Communications Commission has made things more complex. FCC has just required that all the programs on TV must be closed captioned with no exemptions. This regulation has put a huge burden on local TV stations and on our ministry in work time and cost. You know that I preach freely by the leading of the Holy Spirit based on an outline which I prepared before. Now I have to find people to write down the transcript from the video. People have volunteered for that. But in addition, we have to pay $100 more per episode to the TV station so that they could find a company to put it on the caption. We have considered whether or not this governmental action is a message from God for us to leave the TV and minister to you through other means. However, we will know the will of God by listening to you. If you speak through increased prayer and giving, we will continue to serve you on the air. Write to us, the TV station and maybe FCC too. May God have mercy on this country which does not deserve blessings, but depends on His grace. Amen.